Imagine your brain, an incredibly complex network of billions of neurons, suddenly begins firing all at once, out of sync and out of control. That's what happens during a seizure. What exactly is epilepsy? What causes it? And how can it be managed or even prevented? In this video, we'll break down the science behind seizures, explain how epilepsy is diagnosed and treated, and show you what to do if someone has a seizure right in front of you. Whether you are a student, a caregiver, or just curious, stick around. This might be the most important few minutes you spend today. An epileptic seizure is a transient, abnormal, excessive, and over-synchronized activity of neurons. It can have different manifestations from subtle ones that are barely noticeable to more dramatic ones accompanied by the convulsions of the whole body. Epilepsy is a chronic neurological disorder in which the affected individual has repeated, spontaneous and unprovoked seizures. It is important to note that a single seizure does not mean someone has epilepsy. A seizure can happen to anyone if the brain is affected by a strong enough stimulus, like high fever, low blood sugar or trauma. Epilepsy, however, involves a long-term change in the brain that lowers the seizure threshold. The most important causes of epilepsy include brain injuries, stroke, brain infections, tumors, abnormal brain development, and a larger number of different genetic disorders. Seizures have a wide range of manifestations, from barely noticeable to dramatic. People with epilepsy usually have the same type of seizure and similar symptoms during each episode. In practice, depending on the presentation and the surface of the brain affected by the abnormal activity of neurons, epileptic seizures are divided into focal and generalized. Focal seizures happen when abnormal neuronal activity affects a limited brain area and remains confined to the one hemisphere. This type of seizure can have different manifestations depending on the affected part of the brain. It may or may not be associated with a loss of awareness. Focal seizures without alter awareness have a different presentation depending on which part of the brain is affected. For example, if the part of the brain that controls hand movements is affected, involuntary movements occur in the form of repetitive movements of closing and opening the hand. Since the part of the brain that controls the muscles of the hand is adjacent to the part of the brain that controls the muscles of the face, a seizure can cause involuntary movements of both. During a focal seizure, a person is aware and maintains normal contact with the environment. This type of seizure can also manifest as flashes of light, feelings of falling and dizziness, and simple or complex sounds or smells, like burning rubber or gasoline. Before a seizure, one may experience fear, alienation, and the illusion that objects are shrinking or growing. These internal events are called auras. Focal seizures with altered awareness usually begin with an aura followed by involuntary movements such as lip smacking, chewing, or hair movements. During this time, the affected individual may appear confused and not respond normally. Generalized seizure happen when abnormal neuronal activity affects both hemisphere of the brain. There are several different types of generalized seizures. Absence seizures represent 
a short-term interaction of awareness without loss of postural control. That is, the affected individual does not fall. This type of seizure manifests as a few seconds of blank staring. Also, there is no confusion afterward. They usually happen in children and may be accompanied by subtle signs such as blinking and twitching. Atonic seizures lead to a short-term interruption of awareness with loss of postural control, usually manifesting as a head jerk. But if it lasts longer, the affected individual will fall to the ground. Generalized tonic chronic seizures usually happen suddenly, often without warning. They have two distinct phases. The tonic phase involves the spasm of all muscles. Breathing becomes difficult and individuals might bite their tongue because of the spasm of the jaw muscles. 10 to 20 seconds later, muscles relax, marking the beginning of the clonic phase, associated with rhythmic jerking of limbs. There is confusion, fatigue, drooling, or even loss of bladder control afterwards. Myoclonic seizures are sudden jerks of part or the whole body. This type is often associated with other types of generalized seizures. Epileptic status implies a seizure lasting longer than 5 minutes or multiple seizures in a row without regaining consciousness in between. This is an emergency that requires immediate treatment. Diagnosis is made by the neurologist who takes detailed information from the patient. The first objective is to determine whether an event was a seizure. He or she questions about all the symptoms noticed before, during and after the event. It is important to establish if there are any predisposing factors, such as previous head injuries, previous stroke or brain infection. Details about recent fever, sleep deprivation, alcohol use, or narcotics can be crucial. If epilepsy is suspected, electroencephalography or EEG is the next step. This procedure records brain waves and can detect altered electrical activity of the brain during, but also between seizures, which indicates a tendency for repeated seizures. However, in some individuals with epilepsy, the findings between seizures may be normal, but they are always altered during the event. Magnetic resonance imaging of the head can show the presence of brain damage that may be the cause of seizures. The treatment of epilepsy is aimed at removing the underlying cause, where possible, preventing future seizures and providing adequate psychological and social support to the affected individuals. If seizures are triggered by reversible causes like low blood sugar or substance abuse, treating those can stop seizures entirely. If there's an underlying condition, like a brain tumor, stroke or infection, treating it may reduce seizure risk. Most people with epilepsy need long-term anti-epileptic medications. In addition, lifestyle changes help reduce the risk of seizures. Adequate sleep hygiene, avoiding strong sources of light and sound, and abstinence from alcohol and narcotics are advised. In selected cases where medications don't work, brain surgery may be an option. This is considered only if the seizure focus is small, well-defined and not in a vital brain area, such as areas responsible for speech or movement. If someone is seizure-free for two to three years, has a normal EEG and has normal neurological exams, their doctor may gradually reduce and stop medications, usually over six to 12 months. 
Basijus can return, so this must be done carefully. If you witness a generalized seizure, turn the person onto their side to help keep the airway clear, protect their head from injury, and call emergency services. Don't try to restrain them or put anything in their mouth. They won't swallow their tongue, but trying to move it can cause injury. Epilepsy is a manageable condition, and with the right uh, knowledge, support, and treatment, people with epilepsy can lead full, active lives. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing for more educational content on brain health and medicine. Have a great day.